welcome everyone to Chaitanya Academy International page, and uh, we're continuing uh, with Chapter 10 of Bhagavad Gita, and uh, hopefully we will be able to complete this chapter um, today. Now, let us begin. Nama <laughs> First of all, I offer my Sastang Dandavak Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Guru Dev, Asmadiya Paramaradita Maguru Pada Padma, Nitilila Pravisht Om Vishnu Pada, Ashto Tarasatasi Rupanuga Charivarya, Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev, to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vanchakal Paturubhasa, Upasandha Bhayavasa, Pavitanam Pavani Dio Vaishnavid Dio Namona. By the causes must of Sri Guru and Gauranga, we have been hearing from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, which is entitled the Vibhuti Yoga, the yoga of meditation on the mystic opulences of Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna has spoken. Chatu Sloki Gita, the four seed verses of Bhagavad Gita, which explain Ananya Bhakti, unalloyed, unconditional, unimpedable, transcendental devotion, and how a person engaged in Ananya Bhakti lives and how they become fully enlightened and realized, how they become liberated and directly meet with Sri Krishna and serve him. All of this has been described in Chattasloki Gita. Then last week we heard the response of Arjun to that. And in seven verses, Arjun gave his response. And then he asked Sri Krishna to describe 
in detail his opulences. So we're coming today to, uh, we're beginning from verse 19 of chapter 10, and we'll try to um, complete this chapter today. So just to give some context to verse 19, Krishna's response to Arjun, you may remember that uh, in verse 16, Arjun has said, Vattum ahasya sheishena divyatma divyahyatma vibhutayaha. He is asking, see Krishna, please explain asheishena in detail, elaborately, your vibhuti, your divine mystic opulences. So, Krishna will now respond. He's saying, Hantate katayasyami divyayatma vibhutina padhanyata karushista nasyanto vistarasyame. Yes, Hanta, I will tell you about the, the chief, the predominant uh, vibhutis, mystic opulences among my excellent vibhutis. Mm. O best of the kurus, there is no end to my manifestations. So here, see Krishna is replying to Arjuna's request. Please explain Asheshena elaborately. And Krishna is replying by saying, actually, I cannot explain elaborately. I can only explain Pradhanyata Kuru Shesta. I'll just explain my main opulences why nastyanto vistarasame? Because the expansion of my opulences is unlimited, so it's impossible to describe it in detail. This, in this verse, in this reply, see Krishna is beginning with hanta, which is um, often translated as yes, but hanta is an interjection that can express so many different emotions. For example. Radharani herself has said, Hantaya Mante Abala Haridasavarya, when glorifying Giraj Govardhan. So, Hanta. And by this interjection, she's expressing vismai, astonishment, at how Govardhan is serving in so many ways, see Krishna and all of his associates. And she's also expressing Hanta here means um, harsha, jubilation. Because if you honor a person, then whatever qualities they have, they come to you. So she's thinking, if we do the parikram of Giraj Govardhan and honor him, then his quality of being able to serve Krishna with his whole body fully, then this quality will come to me. So then my life will be successful. So there's uh, the emotion of uh, Harsha, the Sanchi Bhav of Harsha there. Now, Arjun is using the same interjection here. Hanta, sorry, Krishna is using in addressing Arjun the same interjection, hanta, and the emotion expressed by this is, Srila Baladeva Bhushan says, hante ti anukampa kam. The meaning of hanta is anukampa, great compassion. So why is the Krishna saying hanta? It means like, oh, aho, <laughs> why is he saying this? But with the motion of compassion for Arjuna. So you may remember last week that Arjuna finally said to Sri Krishna, Tripti hi srinvato nasti, Guya katea tripti hi srinvato nasti me maritam. Please tell me again about your opulences because when I hear the nectar, then I cannot find any satiation. I can never be satiated by this. So Arjun is experiencing a great thirst. His ears are thirsty to hear. And so, see Krishna is beginning, now in text 19, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Hanta, Anukampartam. This is out of mm, mm, compassion for Arjun. Oh, your ears are very thirsty. Then let me uh, give you this nectar and relieve you. Uh, because, uh, Krishna has uh, dis described Arjun, called Arjun the name Janardhan. Sorry, Arjun has called uh, Krishna Janardhan, meaning one 
who is addressed by one who is in distress in order to get relief from that person. So Krishna is, is uh, Janardhan. And Krishna understanding that Arjun is feeling distress of the thirst to hear about the divine opulences of Krishna. So Krishna is responding very mercifully, very compassionately. Hanta. Hanta te kataisyami. Yes, I will tell you about my chief opulences. So now, in the next verse, see Krishna says, Aham atma buddha kesha sarva bhuta shayastita aham adis chamadyam cha bhutanam anta eva cha. Hey, Gudakesh, a name for Arjun, means conqueror of sleep. Hey, conqueror of sleep, I am situated as the soul of Prakriti. That is, I am the soul of the aggregate of all the Bhutas, all the Jivas, and also within all the uh, elements. Aham Adis Chamadyam Cha. I am the beginning and the middle and the end of all creation. So sometimes uh, the Mayavadis, they say, Oh, I am God, you are God, we are all God, we are all Krishna. And they like to quote this verse, Aham Atma Buddha Kesha, Sava Buddha Shayastita. So they quote, Aham Atma Buddha Kesha, I am, I am the Atma of Arjun. So, but the context here is that Krishna is not saying that I am the Jiva soul. He's saying, I am the Atma who is Sarva Buddha Shayastita, who is in uh, the heart of every living being who is inside all of the elements and so on. So the context here, the word Atma refers to see Krishna's form as the, the three Vishnus. That is uh, Karna Dakishai Vishnu, who is the um, Paramatma of the metacosmos, of all the universes. Then Garbha Dakshai Vishnu, who is the Paramatma of the individual universes. And then Kirdakashai Vishnu, who is the Paramatma of the individual jivas. Mm. So then, see Krishna, he said, Adityanam aham Vishnu, Jyotisham Ravi Angsumam, Marichi Marotamasmi Nakshatranam aham Shashi. Among the Adityas, I am Vishnu. Among lights, I am the sun. Among the Maruts, I am Marichi. And among the stars, I am the moon. So for those who are not very familiar with the Vedic cosmology and uh, the structure of the universe and the various presiding deities of different aspects of nature, uh, this will be not particularly meaningful. So we'll try to explain something about this. The uh, Adichas, among the Adichas I am Vishnu, here the Adichas refers to the sons of Ad Aditi. So, um, and he's saying, among those uh, uh, Adichas I am Vishnu, so here Vishnu actually refers to Lord Vamandev, because, um, as you know, uh, the Indra is uh, one of the sons of Aditi, and uh, he is the king of the Swargalok of heaven. And heaven was conquered by uh, Bali Maharaj. So at that time, the, the, the mother of Indra, feeling compassion for her son and the Devatas, she did austerities, and under the uh, guidance of her husband, Kasyapa, she uh, engaged in a, in a vow of devotion so that the Supreme Lord would appear as her son and then save her other son, Indra. And so that's how uh, Lord Vamandeva appeared in this world. And therefore, hear the phrase, Adityana Maham Vishnu, among the Adityas I am Vishnu. It means, among the sons of Aditi, I am Lord Vamandeva. So then, among the Maruts, I am Marichi. So, in uh, the sixth canto, chapter 19, there's uh, the history of how Indra entered into the womb of uh, Diti and cut her 
son who was in the womb, the fetus, into 49 parts. And uh, instead of becoming one child who was uh, in 49 parts, he became 49 children. And uh, that took Indra by surprise. And, and now all these 49 children, they're all crying. So Indra said, Ma Rut, that means don't cry. So that's why they're called the 49 Maruts. And uh, these are 49 types of air god or devatas of the wind. And uh, you can see they're also mentioned in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 25, which is the pastime of Sri Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. In verse 9, there it is said, Vidyotamana vidyudbihi stanantaha stanayitnubihi tivra marud gananuna vavrisu jalashakaraha. So here, marud gananuna. So the meaning is that when Sri Krishna stopped the um, sacrifice that the bridge basses were doing to um, please Indra, then Indra became very angry. And uh, he sent the various wind gods, the Muruts, and uh, lightning gods and so on, uh, to destroy Brad. So in this verse it is said, propelled by the fearsome Maruts, the wind gods, the clouds blazed with lightning bolts and roared with thunder as they hurled down hailstones. So Sridhar Swami, in his commentary on this verse, he said that Maru, Marud Ganei, the, the, the group of Maruts indicates of the, um, of the 49 Maruts, it indicates the seven most powerful winds. And they're called Avaha, Prabaha, Vibaha, Paravaha, Udvaha, Sambaha, Parivaha. These are the seven main uh, Maruts. So... But of all the Muruts, Marichi is the chief, and this is what is, uh, Krishna is explaining here, that in every jati, in every category, whatever is the most excellent, whatever is the best, that is Krishna's vibhuti, that is his opulence. So now, in verse 22, see Krishna said, Vedayanam samavedosmi devanam asmivasavaha indriyanam manaschasmi among the Vedas, I am the Samaveda. Among the Devatas, the demigods, I am Indra, the king of the demigods. Among the senses, I am the mind, the king of the senses. And in all living creatures, I am Chaitana. That is the power of awareness, Jnana Shakti. So, See, Krishna is saying, among the Vedas, I am the Samaveda, because that is mm, outstanding among the Vedas for its very sweet songs. So this is, again, uh, a glorification of Sankirtan. Mm -hmm. Among the Devatas, I am Indra, because he's the king. Now, Krishna is saying that among the living entities, I am the Chaitanya, the consciousness. So that's the vibhuti of the Supreme Lord. Many persons, many scientists, many philosophers have tried to understand what is consciousness and how does it work? Where does it come from? Is it an emergent property of matter? Uh, does it come about at some specific point by a particular level of complexity of the neural circuitry? So... There are many ideas, and no one can figure it out because it is a chincha. It is inconceivable. It is simply uh, one of the opulences of Supreme Lord, his jnana shakti. So, in fact, what to speak of the uh, aprakrita supernatural things being a chincha, even the relationship between a vastu and its shakti, in other words, its, its telos, its uh, inherent causal powers, uh, this relationship is also a chintya in regard to material things. And uh, these uh, vibhutis 
are manifest by Paramatma. And this is why in the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, nothing in the universe is even minutely or slightly uh, explainable. Nothing can be explained. Everything is inexplicable without reference to Paramatma. If you're giving an explanation of something in this world and it doesn't include the Achinsha Shakti of Paramatma, you're wrong. So, next verse, text 23. Rudranam Sankarasthasmi Viteisho Yaksharakshasam Vasunam Pavakaschasmi Marahushi Karinam Maham Among the Rudras, I am Shankar. Among the Yakshas and Rakshasas, I am Kuvir. Among the Vasus, I am Agni. And among the peaked mountains, I am Mount Meru. So, in the, the first statement here, among the Rudras, I am Shankar. So, in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, there it is said, Sarupa sutubhutasya bariya rudang koti shaha, which means that there is a prajapati, a progenitor of, of beings named Prajapati Daksha, and his wife's name is Asikni. So they had a daughter named Sarupa, and Sarupa was, Daksha gave Sarupa to the sage named Bhuta. And by union with the sage named Bhuta, Sarupa gave birth to 10 million Rudras, that's Koti Rudras, of whom 11 Rudras are prominent. They are um, Raivat, Aja, Bhava, Bhima, Vama, Ugra, Vishakapi, um, Ajay, Kapat, Ahir, Bradna, Bahurupa, and Mahan. So they are the famous uh, 11 Rudras that do the Tandavanetra dance of destruction at the end of the cycle of the, of the ages and the universe, the whole universe becomes destroyed by the Rudras. So there are 10 million Rudras. Of them, chief, uh, there are 11 Rudras, and among all the Rudras, their leader is Shankar, Lord Shiva himself. Shankar, Shiva means auspicious, and Shankar means prosperous. So this is very important because many persons, I think, oh, if Bhakti is the best path, then let me do Bhakti to Lord Shiva. And Krishna here is saying, no, no, no. That Shiva that you want to worship, He's just one of the opulences of uh, one of my tiny expansions, the uh, Paramatma. So then, see Krishna is saying, Krishna is saying, Krishna is saying, saying uh -huh. among the Yakshas and Rakshasas, I am Kuver. Um, so Kuver is the treasurer of the demigods, and the Yakshas are his associates who, who protect the treasures. Um, the Rakshasas are also one type of um, demigod-like being, but they are um, generally depicted as being demonic. Yeah? Because their name Rakshasa comes from Vayam Rakshamaha, means we will protect ourselves. In other words, they have no sense of dependence on God. So they're the Rakshasas, uh, demons, uh, they're also famous for cannibalism and so on. So, um, but the leader of Yakshas and Rakshasas is, is, is Kuvir. So he's one of the opulences of, of, of uh, Sri Krishna. Now, text 24. Puroda sam chamukyam mam vidiparta brihaspatim senani namaham skanda sarasam asmisagaraha among the priests, I am the chief of all priests, that is Brihaspati. So Brihaspati is the second son of the sage Angira Rishi, who is a disciple of Vyasadeva. And uh, Brihaspati is the guru of all the demigods. So he's their, their priest, he guides them in all of their uh, sacrificial performances. So among all priests, he is the best of priests. 
So then he said, among the Sainapati, the generals or the leaders of armies, I am uh, Kartikeya. So uh, his name is Skanda, and he's the son of Lord Shiva. Among reservoirs of water, I am the ocean. So it should be clear that there are many lakes and rivers, but among them, supreme is the ocean, incomparable, unparalleled. Text 25. Mahashinam bragur aham gramasmi kamaksham yagyanam jagpayapyusmi stavaranam himalayaha among the Maharshis, the great sages, I am Brigu. Among words, I am the Pranava. Om. Among Yagyas, sacrifices, I am Japa. That is the repetition of mantra, chanting Japa. And among immovable objects, I am the Himalayas. So here, it is said that Krishna is saying, my vibhuti among the rishis is Bhrigu Rishi. So the word Rishi means mantra drasta. The rishi is generally considered a sage, but it really means a seer. But what is it that they see? Mantra drasta. They are the seers of the Vedic mantras. That means that they are not mantra rachayita. Mantra rachayita means the composers of the mantras. The mantras of the Vedas are not composed by the sages. They don't um, write them down as a creation of their own imagination, but rather they go into trance and in their trance they hear the mantras and they see the forms of the mantras also. And so Rishi means mantra drasta, one who sees the mantra and then reveals that eternal mantra to the world. So, Bhrigu is the, one of the sons of Brahma. The ja among sacrifices, Japa is considered to be supreme, especially because it does not involve killing animals, and also because the crest jewel the, uh, of all the Vedas and, uh, is being engaged in worship to the light emanating from the tips of the toes of Harinam. So, Japa means taking shelter of the holy name, and therefore it's the best of all yagyas. Now, text 26. Ashwata sarva brikshanam devashinam chanarudaha gandavanam charitrataha siddhanam kapilo munuhi Among the trees, I am the pipal tree. Among the divine sages, the sages among the, the, the devas, I am Narad Muni. Among the Gandharvas, I am the king of the Gandharvas, Chitrata. He's called Chitrata because he has a Chitra Rata. Rata is a chariot and Chitra means wonderful. So because he rides on an astonishing chariot, his name is Chitrata. And among the Siddhas, the perfected beings, I am Lord Kapildev. So Lord Kapildev is a Shakyavesh avatar of uh, the Supreme Lord. He's, of course, the, the son of Kardamamuni and Devahuti. You can read about his life story um, in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So then, text 27. Uchaisravasam asvanam vidimam amritudbhavan aravatam gajendranam naranam chad naradipam Among the horses and Uchaisrava who rose from the nectar ocean. Among elephants, I am Airavata. He also appeared from uh, both of these creatures, the horse and the elephant. Uh, they were taken actually by Indra and they appeared when the demons and demigods were churning the ocean of milk. Mm -hmm. Then among men, I am the king. So here, uh, the king, Naradipa, refers to a, a ruler who is fixed in Dharma and has, due to his fixity in Dharma, uh, unbearable strength. Then, text 28. Arjuna is listening to the nectar of Krishna's description of 
his own devotees. Nothing is separate from him. Ayutanam maham bhajram denunam asmi kamaduk pajanas chasmi kandar paha sarpanam asmi vasukihi Among weapons, I am the thunderbolt. That is the most powerful weapon of Indra that was uh, made from the bones of the great sage, the Dichi Muni. Among cows, I am the Kamadenu, the wish-fulfilling cow. Among the Prajana, I am Kandarpa. That means here, Prajana means uh, the cause of the procreation. Uh, he is Kandarpa, that is the God of love. So that Kandarpa, who is um, instigating the living beings into uh, uh, procreation, uh, that is the one vibhuti of Krishna. So this is important. He's not speaking about recreational sex. Only procreational sex is the uh, Kandarpa, the God of love, who is the vibhuti of Sri Krishna. <clears throat> then he's saying, among the snakes, I am Basuki. So there are different types of snakes. Uh, we'll see in the next verse. He says, among the Nagas, I am Ananta. So uh, among the, the Sarpa, those are snakes with one head, he is Basuki. And among the Nagas, who have many heads, he is Ananta. So Anantas chasminaganam varno yada sammaham pitrina mariyama chasmi yama samyama tammaham Among the Nagas I am Ananta. Among the inhabitants of the water I am Varuna, uh, the god of the watery realm. Among the Pitris I am Aryama. So there's a planet of the uh, forefathers. Those who perform particular yagyas can go there. It's a heavenly uh, type of planet, and the king there is Aryama. So Aryama is the lord, the king, on the Pitrilok, the planet of the ancestors. And among punishers, I am Yam, Yamaraj, who gives appropriate punishment to everyone at the end of their life. Those who are uh, have not become transcendental, uh, they must commit a mixture of pious and impious activities. Everyone has to go to the court of Yamaraj and there they will be um, sentenced to uh, punishments which precisely uh, correspond to their behaviors in life. So everyone is responsible for every action that they do. Don't forget that. Text 30. Praladas chasmi daitanam kalaha kalayatamam Briganam cha makrendroham vainateyas cha pakshinam. Among the daichas, that means the sons of Diti. Previously he spoke about the sons of Aditi. Now he's speaking about the sons of Diti. Uh, in that line, that dynasty coming from Diti, uh, came of course Hiranyakashibu and then Prahlad. So he said, among the daichas, I am Prahlad. Why? Because of his very intense devotion. Then, Kala Kalayatam Maham. Among the controllers, I am time. Time is controlling everything. Among animals, I am the lion. And among birds, I am Garuda. Because uh, Garuda is a bird, but he's also the eternal associate of uh, Sri Krishna and his carrier in his uh, opulence uh, leelas. Of course, the original form of Garuda is a very sweet cowherd boy, and that is a uh, Sri Dham. So, just as in Vaikuntha, uh, Garuda is carrying uh, the Lord Narayan on his shoulders, but in Vrindavan, that Lord Narayan or origin form, Krishna's two Bhagavan Sayam Sri Krishna, is carrying Sri Dham on his shoulders. So, we see there is the Viruddha Dharma, the um, uh, incredible reversals or contradictions that are brought about by praying pure love. So, text 31. Pavanaha pavatamasmi ramaha shastri pritamaham jasanam makarasthasmi sotasamasmi janavi Among purifiers, I am the wind. Among the holders of weapons, 
It says Ram. Here, Ram actually means Parashuram, who uh, destroyed uh, 21 times all the uh, dynasties of the Katriyas, the warriors who had deviated, become independent from the guidance of the Brahmanas. So, among fish, I am the Makara. And among rivers, I am the Ganges. Text 32. Sarganam madir antascha madhyam chaivaham arjuna adyatma vidyavidyanam bada pravadatamaham. I am the creation, the destruction, and the maintenance of all elements. Among all types of knowledge, I, I am atma vidya, knowledge of the soul. And bada pravadatam aham, among the various types of debates or dialogues, I am vada, the siddhanta, the conclusion. So, in verse 20, Sri Krishna had said, Ahamadistamadyam cha bhuta nama eva cha, that uh, I am the beginning, middle, and end, the creation, maintenance, and destruction of the bodies of the living entities. And in this verse, he's referring to the material elements. So even though it seems to be the same, there's no repetition. Now, here Krishna says, Adyatma Vidya Vidyanam, among all types of Vidya, I am Atma Vidya, knowledge of the soul. So the various types of Vidya are described in the Vishnu Purana, Angani Vedas Chattaro Mimangsanyaya Vistara Dharma Shastram Puranam Cha Vidya Hitas Chatur Dasha. There are four Vedas and then six Vedangas. So the six Vedangas are Shiksha, the pronunciation of mantra, Chanda, poetic meters, Vyakaran, that is grammar, Nirupta, etymology, Jyotish, astrology, Kalpa, how to perform the rituals, Vedic rituals, and uh, so those are the six Veda Angas. So then, Nyai, that means uh, the logic sutras of uh, Gautam Rishi. And then it is mentioned Mimangsa, that means the uh, Karma Mimangsa, the text dealing with the performance of the uh, Karma Kanda Vedic rituals for elevation to the heavenly planets. And also Mimangsa, there is uh, Purva Mimangsa and Uttar Mimangsa. So the Uttar Mimangsa is a Vedanta. So all together, uh, these are 14 types of knowledge. There's Dharma Shastra and the Puranas. So all together, this makes 14 types of, of knowledge. So Krishna is saying, among these 14 types of knowledge, I am Atma Vidya, knowledge of the soul. So knowledge of the soul is the most important thing. If we don't know, who am I? That was Srila Sanatana Goswami's first question to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Kami. It's an astonishing thing that this world, there are so many universities, there are so many educational establishments, there are so many academics and scientists. And they're studying many subjects, but they're not taking seriously the most, uh, the primary question, the most fundamental question, who am I? And because of this, all of their knowledge is completely uh, wrong, relative, and uh, distorted and uh, inflicted with the illusion. So everything begins with Atma Vidya, but the Atma Vidya is not the last, the last stage. The Prem of the residence of Vrindavan, which is beyond all consideration of Vidya and Avidya, this is even higher. So uh, we'll be discussing that later. We'll, it will come just very soon, this topic. Now, Krishna is saying, among the um, Prabhadatam, 
among those who are engaged in debate with each other. Pravatatam means those who are engaged in debate with each other. Ayan Vadaha. So what does that mean? When people have debates, there are three types which are famous. One is called Jalpa, another Vitanda, and then Vad. So if there are two people and they're having a discussion, and they, both of them just simply say, I am right, I, I have to prove that my point is correct. And they try to establish their own opinion and refute the other person's opinion by any means possible, which will include circumventing the uh, opponent's uh, propositions, uh, and that is called chal, or making false generalizations, that is called jati, or putting together syllogisms, which are um, actually uh, defective. So that is a syllogistic fault, nigrahastan, the grounds for defeat. So when someone is using all these types of um, dishonest argumentation, then this is called jalpa. Now, when one party is only trying to refute the other party's point, but without establishing his own, that is called vitanda. But uh, we should know that these two types of arguments, these are for people in passion and ignorance. If a person is a sattvic, and especially if a disciple is taking shelter of his nirgun guru, and they're having a samvad, a discussion, then this is very beautiful. No one is trying to defeat anyone else, but there's simply the honest search for the truth. Mm -hmm. So when that discussion is going on and uh, the uh, conclusions are presented in a perfect way, in accordance with Shastra, and the conclusion is established, that discussion is called Vādaha. So Krishna said, among those who are engaged in discussions, dialogue, debates, I am Vādaha because that is outstanding, because it's fruitful, it's not an endless uh, argumentation without any conclusion, but it's fruitful. It leads one to the truth. And Krishna said, that is my vibhuti. Text 33, Krishna is saying now, Aksharanam akarusmi dandvasamas sikasyacha ahame vakshaya khalo dataham vishvatomuka Among letters, I am the letter A. Among compounds, I am the Dwandwa. Among the destroyers, I am the fire of universal destruction. And among the creators, I am Lord Brahma. So in the Vedas, it is said, Akro Vaisarvavak, that all letters are included in A. Mm -hmm. So, Krishna said, among the compounds, I am Dwandva. So there are different types of compounds, such as the Tatparu Samas, Bahu Vrihi Samas. And in these compounds, different emphasis is put on one word or the other. But in the Dwandva Samas, then equal emphasis is put on uh, both words. And so uh, that is considered to be uh, supreme among the uh, the samas. This is a discussion of uh, grammar. So then Krishna said, Mrchu sarvahas charam utbhavas charbhavishyatham kirti srik vakchanari nam smriti meda dhitikshama Among deaths, I am that which takes away all memory. That means that at every moment we are dying. Actually, everything is changing at every moment. Uh, but that death which removes all your memory of this life, that is the final one, Krishna said, that is me. Then, among all the transformations of the body which took, take place, I am Janma, Udbhava, birth. Among women, I am the fame, beauty, eloquence, memory, intelligence, determination, and forgiveness. So, actually, why does it say, among women, I am these things? And uh, 
the reason is that these are all uh, demigods. They're female demigods, the presiding uh, deities of these different qualities. And it should be understood that all of these qualities also are in, the, in Lakshmi Devi, in the queens of Dwarka, and especially they find their highest um, abode, their highest foundation in the gopis of Vrindavan. They are the most famous, they are the most beautiful, they are the most eloquent in their speech, they have the best memory, the best determination, and so on. And the best tolerance for Krishna's notorious activities also, and forgiveness. So, Brihat Sama Tata Samnam Gayatri Chanda Samaham Masanam Makashi Soham Ritunam Kushamakaraha Earlier, Krishna had said that among the Vedas, I am the Samaveda. Now he's saying that among the prayers of the Samaveda, I am the Brihat Sama. So, uh, the Brihat Sama is uh, special and it's chanted at the end of uh, the Vedic ceremonies. Among the verses, I am Gayatri. So, Gayatri reveals the Swarup of Sri Krishna. And so that is the, the, the best. Sometimes um, persons translate the among the chandas, means among the various meters, poetic meters, I am Gayatri. So the, the Gayatri Michanda or meter has 24 syllables divided into three sections. Usually uh, it's uh, three sections of eight syllables. Uh, but our acharyas are taking the word chanda to mean among verses, not among the meters, but among various verses of poetry, I am uh, the Gayatri mantra, in which case the Gayatri doesn't refer just to a meter that could be to any devata, but it refers to the Brahma Gayatri, which especially reveals the swoop of Krishna, and especially the, we can say, Vargodeva Siddhimahi, it is a meditation on the Shakti of Krishna, and that is Radharani herself. So among the verses, Vedic verses, I am the Gayatri. Now Krishna is saying, among months, I am uh, Marga Shirsha. So Marga Shirsha uh, is the, this Vedic month is November, from about mid-November to mid-December. But uh, that's the position of Marga Shirsha now. At the time when Krishna spoke this, it was uh, a different time of the year. And that is because uh, there's an astronomical uh, phenomena called the procession of the equinoxes. And because of that, the seasons fall back relative to the fixed stars and, uh, and relative to the Hindu calendar by one day every 72 years. So if you analyze the astrological data in the Mahabharat, you'll see that uh, the events in the Mahabharat have fallen back relative to our calendar now by 72, uh, sorry, 70 days. And so, because these, uh, each day, uh, it falls back each day, one day every 72 years, that means that the Mahabharat uh, was composed approximately 70 times 72 years ago. So if you do the mathematics, that's 5,040 years. So the um, antiquity of the events in the Mahabharata is uh, proven by astrology here. So Krishna is saying, among the seasons, I am spring, which is better than the other seasons because it's not too hot and it's not too cold. It has many fragrant flowers. And it has many festivals like uh, Vasant Panchami, which celebrate uh, the pastimes of Krishna and the gopis and the springtime Rasalila. And most of all, Krishna says, among seasons, I am the spring, because in the spring is Gaura Purnima, Nitai Gaura Premanande, Hari Hari Bo. And the uh, Therefore, there's, there's one island in Navadip Dham called Ritu Dweep, where all the goddesses of the seasons, they tell uh, Vasant Devi, the goddess of springtime, you are the most fortunate because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has selected you for his 
appearance there. Mm. Now, 36. Tutam chalaya tamasmi tejas tejas vinamaham jayosmi vyavasayosmi sattvam sattva vatamaham. In relation to those who are cheating each other, I am juta. Juta means gambling, especially with dice. Why? Because if you play these dice games, you will lose everything. You, like Yudhisthira Maharaj, he has illustrated that in his life. Though he's the embodiment of Dharma, just by touching this sinful activity of gambling, he forgot everything. Buddhinash, his intelligence was destroyed. He became addicted and he lost everything. So among uh, those who are engaged in cheating, I am gambling. Among conquerors, I am victory. Among uh, those who endeavor, I am their persistence in the endeavor. And among the str strong, I am the strength. Vrishninam Vasudevosmi Pandabanam Dananjaya Muninam Apyaham Vyasa Kavinam Usanakavi So here, see Krishna is saying, Vrishni nam Vasudev Osmi. In the Vrishni dynasty, I am Vasudev. Now, many persons translate this, that among the Vrishnis, I am Vasudev, meaning Krishna, the son of Vasudev. This cannot be correct, because that is Krishna's own swarup. In fact, it's Vasudev Krishna who is speaking this Bhagavad Gita, uh, from the general point of view, we can say. And uh, his own swarup cannot be his vibhuti. So the, just the um, direct meaning uh, that uh, comes apparent to us as soon as we read it, Vrishni Nam Vasudeva Swami, uh, among the Vrishni I am the son of Vasudeva, Krishna uh, cannot be correct. So Srila Vishnu Chakitaku su suggests that here the word uh, Vasudeva is one uh, uh, grammatical by one grammatical rule it actually refers to Krishna's father Vasudev so among the Vrishnis Krishna is saying I am my father Vasudev Maharaj Srila Baladevi Dibhushan comments that actually Vasudev Maharaj through Rohini has another son named Balaram so he takes the meaning to be Vishnu and Vasudev Osmi. Among the Vrishnis, I am the son of, Vas of Vasudev, that is Balaram or Sankarshan. So Krishna is saying, my brother is my vibhuti, a manifestation of my mystic opulence because he's my Vaibhav Pakash. And uh, we like that because uh, we follow in the mood of the residence of Braja and we never accept that Krishna is the son of Vasudev. <laughs> So why should we take this verse to mean Krishna Vasudeva Osmi? Among the Vrishnis, I am the son of Vasudeva and it means Krishna. We never accept Krishna is son of Nandamaraj and Yashoda. Let the Balaram be the son of Vasudeva. That's better. <laughs> so Vrishni Nam Vasudeva Osmi. Among the Vrishnis, I am the son of Vasudeva, not Krishna, Balaram, Sankarshan. So here Krishna is saying, among Pandava Nam Dananja, among the Pandavas, I am you, Arjun. So why is that? Because uh, Arjun is also one uh, avatar, one Shaktivesh avatar of Krishna because uh, the Supreme Lord appears in his dual incarnation of Nara Narayan Rishi. And uh, Krishna is Narayan Rishi and Arjun is Nara Rishi. So uh, the other Pandavas are not uh, the actual avatars of the Supreme Lord, but Arjun is therefore Pandavanam Dananjaya, among the Pandavas, I am Arjun. Muninam Apyaham Vyasaha, and the same applies here. Among the Munis, I am Vyasadev. So there are so many Munis, uh, but Srila Vyasadev is the Shaktivesh avatar of Krishna himself. So Muninam Apyaham Vyasaha, Kavinam Ushana Kavi. And among the Kavis, that means those who are able to discern the subtle meanings of things, the subtle meanings of poetry, literature, and logic, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, and that is Ushanas, that is a name of the Shukra Acharya, 
who is the guru of all the uh, daichas and danavas, the demons. So we see earlier that the guru of the demigods is called Krishna's opulence among the chief, he's the chief of the priests. And whereas the guru of all the de uh, demons, he is the chief among the logicians. <clears throat> Then, verse 38, Sri Krishna is saying, Dando dhamma yatam asmi nitir asmi jagishatam maunam chayvasmi guhyanam jnanam jnana vatam maham I am the correct punishment among those who carry out punishment. Among those who devire, desire victory, I am niti. Niti means ethics and the proper application of political policy. If someone wants victory in this world, they have to be ethical and they have to apply the rules of uh, um, politics as described in the Niti Shastra, like uh, Vidu Niti and so on. So, we can say something. The, the word Niti or policy comes from ni datu, the verb root ni, which means prapane. Prapane, that means to reach. In other words, it's the method by which you reach your goal by following the correct uh, policy. And uh, niti also can come from ni datu prapane, from which the word nayan and netra or eyes, because our eyes lead us. They're the leading organ that, that gives guidance to all the other organs. And so uh, the, uh, the leader, the king, who is following Niti, is leading the people like an eye in the attainment of their various goals. So Niti has four uh, famous divisions. That is Sam, Dan, Baid, and Danda. Sam means negotiation. When you first come into a conflict with someone, you try to negotiate with them uh, with uh, logic and reason. If that doesn't work, then dan means you can bribe them, give them some gift, some money, some position. If that doesn't work, then you'll have to do bait, and that means to create dissension, division, uh, to weaken your enemies. Uh, so they'll fight with each other instead of fighting with you. And if that doesn't work, then danda. It has to come to uh, argumentum ad baculum, arguing with the stick. There'll have to be punishment or war. So these uh, four types of diplomacy, we see that Krishna has uh, used them when he became an envoy or an ambassador on behalf of the Pandavas uh, to negotiate with Duryodhan. So we see that first of all, when the Pandavas had completed their 13 years of exile, so now it was time for them to uh, take their rightful share of the kingdom. So Krishna first came to Duryodhan, and Duryodhan was pushing, he wanted war. So Krishna was trying to negotiate with him first by using some diplomacy, negotiation. So Krishna said, oh Duryodhan, the Pandavas have Dharma on their side, so where there's Dharma, there's also victory. So it's better you don't make war with them. They've completed their 13 years of exile uh, as per the agreement. So now you have to get, return to them their share of the kingdom. You've already done so many atrocities to them, so just you should stop here and act in a fair way. So when Krishna negotiated in this way, Duryodhana still would not listen. So then Krishna went to uh, the uh, next uh, point, and that is a dan, to be charitable and give something in charity. So he said, O oh, Duryodhan, if you're not willing to give the Pandavas at least half of the kingdom, then just give them five villages so that each one of the Pandavas can, can be a Katriya and give protection to the people in one village each, so at least they can perform their Dharma. Hmm? And still, you can rule everything else, and there'll be no war. So Duryodhan didn't take this either, and he said, I will not give them enough land into which you can drive the head of a pin even. So he was extremely uh, malicious and, uh, and uh, miserly. 
So then Krishna's next tactic was secretly he went to meet with Karna. So Karna is one of the main soldiers on the side of Duryodhan. And Krishna tried to make bait, division among the ranks of the supporters of Duryodhan. So Krishna went to Karna and said, Hey Karna, you are not the son of Radha. You are not a Sutta. You are not the son of a, of a chariot driver. You are not Radhaya. I know who your real mother is. You are the eldest son of Kunti. Huh? What does that mean? That means actually the king of the world, the rightful king of the world should be Yudhisthira Maharaj because he's the eldest son of Kunti. But before Kunti was married to uh, Pandu, she'd already had a child with the sun god and that was uh, Karna. And Karna was adopted by uh, a Sutta, a, a, a person in the caste of charioteers. So, but in his whole life, he didn't know that. And Krishna now revealed to him, said, you're the eldest son of Kunti. So if you come with me, the Pandavas will worship you as their eldest brother. And you'll become the rightful emperor of the whole world. And Bhimsain will become your commander instead of wanting to fight with you. Hmm? Arjun will become your charioteer even. Nakul and Sahadev will become your bodyguards. You'll be the king of the whole world and all the Pandavas will worship you. Hmm? Just come with me. So in this way, Krishna used the third part of Niti, that is Bade, make division among the ranks of Duryodhana. But Karna, he had a strong determination in his heart. In my life, everyone was mean to me. Everyone was cool to me. No one respected me. The only person who was my friend was Duryodhana and I cannot be disloyal to him. So therefore, the fourth method of Niti is war. And here we are. Right now, you can see behind me, the two armies are gathered together. There's about to be a huge war. And Krishna is speaking the Bhagavad Gita. Um, but we're using this just to illustrate in this verse how Krishna is saying that Niti Asmi Jagishatam, those who want to be victorious, they should follow Niti ethics and correct rules of uh, political engagement. Now, Krishna, in the same verse, he says, Monam Chaivasmi Guyanam. So, one translation is, Among secrets, I am silence. So, obviously, if something's secret and you are silent, you never speak about it, then it will remain uh, a secret. So, but it has a deeper meaning here. Here, Guya means uh, transcendental realization. Guya Vidya, the real, Guya is the realization of God. So Mona doesn't mean only silence. In the Yoga Sutras, Mon is described, there are two types of Mon, Kashtamon and Akarmon. Akarmon is formal silence. That means you don't speak. And then Kashtamon means that actually you're like a piece of wood because someone who doesn't speak can also communicate with others by moving their eyebrows, winking, or by any amount of gestures, but they're not formally speaking. So Kashtamon means you're exactly like a piece of wood, expressionless. Not communicating anything at all by any expression. But the, the, the deeper meaning of moan is not silence, but it means to become a muni, to meditate. So because meditation is the, one has to enter into the state of meditation before he can have God realization. Therefore, it is said uh, that uh, among the guya, the ways of attaining God realization, I am known meditation because it's the state that comes. First, there's the, um, the hearing First you hear about the spiritual knowledge and then you deliberate upon it and then you go into profound meditation on it and then you realize it. So that's why Krishna says here that monam um, guyanam and that the, in the state of meditation, the realization comes and you're still in the state of meditation. So these are also simultaneously occurring um, 
situations, the realization and the meditation. Ideally, one should engage in hearing in, in a moan, hearing as a meditation itself that will give immediate realization also. So now Krishna is saying, text uh, 39, Yatschapi sarvabhutanam bijam tadaham arjuna na tadasti vinas yatsyan mayabhutam characharam I am the seed which causes all living entities to manifest. O Arjuna, no moving or non-moving entity can exist without me. Nanto sti mamadit bhyanam vibhuti nam parantapa eshat tud Tuddeshataha prokto vibhute vistaro maya. Text 40, Krishna is saying, There is no end to my wonderful mystic opulences. I have spoken only uh, one portion and just pointing in the direction of this uh, broad topic. So now, see, Krishna is summarizing text 41. Yadyad vibhuti matsatvam sri madurjitamevava. Whatever object in the past, the present, or the future displays majesty, that is Aishwarya, beauty, or strength, you should know that it has arisen just from a fragment of my power. So, this verse is very important. Whatever manifestations have uh, Aishwarya, majestic power, whatever has Sri, beauty, whatever has Urja, uh, potency, strength, then all of this is Krishna's Vibhuti. So this verse of Bhagavad Gita is essential for those who want to follow the verse, Trinada Pi Sunichena, Tarora Pi Sahishtana, Amane Dhammana Dhena, Kirtanya Sudahari. One should chant the holy name continuously, giving all respects to others, not expecting respect for oneself. One should be more tolerant than the tree, and one should consider oneself to be more insignificant than a blade of grass. Now on the path of bhakti, what happens? As we start to make some progress, then uh, we begin to look very shiny and beautiful. Some intelligence comes, and uh, some uh, honor comes from others. And all types of opulences the, of, of Krishna, Sava Mahaguna Gan, Vaishnava Shariri, all the great opulences of Krishna appear in the uh, devotees. So, what happens is when an Abbas, not actually the, those opulences, but only an Abbas, a slight semblance of those opulences, begins to manifest in the Kunishta Adhikari who is slowly making progress, then what happens? Taranga Rangini. All opulences come and he begins to just become lackadaisical and complacent in the practice of bhakti and think, I am becoming a great personality if I am not indeed already a great personality. And thinking like this about himself, then bhakti becomes slack and he starts to regress instead of progressing. And uh, so this verse is very important always to remember. If, by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, you develop some intelligence, good memory, attractiveness, beauty, and influence, know, Krishna is saying, that all these things are my opulences, not yours. Hmm? Very important. So that's why we say, Sri Sri Guru Garanga O Jayata, O glories to Guru and Garanga. Whatever praise or whatever success, whatever we may achieve, uh, we have not done it. It is all the glory of Guru and Gauranga. So, now in text uh, 42, which is the, the final verse of this chapter, now we're coming to the end, chapter 10, last verse. Atava naitehena Kim gya tein tavarjuna vistabhya ham idam kritsnam ekam kshena stito jagat. Hey Arjun, what is the use of knowing all these individual vibhutis, all these details? 
Please understand, by just one portion of myself, my expansion of expansion of expansion of expansion, Paramatma, I am firmly established in this universe. So here, see Krishna is saying that all these are my bhutis and there's no need to understand them all individually. Don't focus on that. So, you've been listening for quite a long time to so many details about different vibhutis. And uh, it's possible that you maybe scratch your head and thinking, what, what is the purpose? Why is Krishna speaking this? So, we want to now take the essence of this whole discussion. The essence of the discussion is this. We have heard from early in detail that bhakti is the way. But someone may worship Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma or Brihaspati or Shukracharya or whoever it is. And Krishna is saying, all of these things, they are my vibhutis, they are my opulences. So don't worship any of them. No midyate pravapaseta didambara. As Lord Brahma said, O oh Krishna, Shama Sunda, in your two-handed human-like beautiful form as a coward boy, only you are the true object of worship of all living entities. Right? Another thing we're seeing here is that the essence of Vibhuti Yoga is that by hearing this, one becomes free from the Dwandva, duality. See, Krishna is Advaya Gyan Tattva, the non-dual absolute truth. But we are in this world in a state of Dwandva, duality. That uh, Dwandva, duality, is essentially the perception of the world as being made of so many Swatantra Vastu, independent objects. So this is very profound. Please listen to it very carefully. Mm -hmm. Actually, everything is the manifestation of God. Everything comes from Him. He is within everything. Everything is within Him. He is the beginning, the middle, and end of everything. Nothing can function or exist without Him. Nothing is independent of Him. But what are we seeing? We are seeing individual separate objects everywhere. And that is actually a vikalpa. Vikalpa, it means an abstraction, a concept. But the thing is that this concept comes from Rajagun, unsteadiness of the mind. Mm -hmm. So because everyone, from the general man in the street up to the topmost academic and scientists, they're all drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes and, and their minds are in Rajas. And so this Rajas causes them to do Vikalpa. As Krishna said in the 11th canto, Kaivalyam satvikam jnanam rajo vaikalpitam chayat prakritam tamasam jnanam mannistam nirganam svritam That if someone is in very high sattva gun, then they can understand the difference between the body and the soul, the self and the non-self. Because they're free from the influence of the avidya vritti of maya, rajagun. But those who are not realizing, intuitively, directly experiencing, I am not this body. Everyone else is thinking, I am the body. And Rajo uh, Vaikalpi Tamchayat, their mind is full of uh, Vikalpa. So Vikalpa is often translated as imagination. But it's not imagination as you think. It is the abstraction of conception. But because practically everyone in the world is in Rajagun, and they all have a consensus that the world is made of the um, individual independent substances and everything is going on uh, randomly or mechanically according to deterministic laws. So because people have these different ideas, but they, whatever, in whichever way they conceive or see the world, it has something in common that everything is uh, separate individual things, that there's no, nothing joining them together. So this is a vikalpa, and because everyone has this, then they confirm it by associating with each other, and they're not even aware that this is just an abstraction of their mind. So, <clears throat> Krishna says, the knowledge of 
just physical things like eating and sleeping and manipulating the external energy is coming from tamagun. The conceptuality is coming from rajas. But manistamni gunam smritam. Chris said, the knowledge of me is nirgun, free from the gunas. So when Krishna is explaining that all of these are his vibhuti, this knowledge is nirgun, and gradually by listening to it, the person develops the integrated vision. In the state of the dwanva, duality, we have pritagdrisha. Pritagdrisha means we're seeing everything is separate. But when you hear... This is Krishna's vibhuti, this is Krishna's vibhuti, this is Krishna's vibhuti. Slowly there is an integration in one's consciousness of all things. And that leads to the gradual uh, subsiding of Rajagun, along with that the subsiding of abstract concept conceptualism of, of things being independent from God. And that leads to Sattva Gun, the realization that I am not this body, I am just the, just the Shakshi, a witness in relation to the body. And then when a person has come into that state, then all the obstacles to Ananya Bhakti have gone. Ananya Bhakti means devotion, Ananya, one pointed only to Krishna, not to anything else. So when the consciousness is pure, there is nothing else. And only Ananya Bhakti to the beautiful human-like form of Krishna as a coward boy will lead to Prem, Braja Prem. And so uh, Lord Brahma has said, Jnane prayasa muda pasya namanta eva jivanti sanmukaritam bhavadiyavatam stane stito sutikatam tanuman vanobhye ye prayasopya ye prayasojita jitopya sitai stilokyam the meaning is, jnane prayasam. Give up the attempt for jnan, knowledge. So here, this doesn't uh, just mean uh, the adhyatma jnan, uh, that uh, the analysis, the knowledge of the various elements and how the self is different from, uh, from the body. But this also means, give up the attempt to know the aishwarya, the opulences of Krishna. That's the essence of this final verse. What is the use of all this knowledge, Arjun? All these opulences are just a, a coming from one spark of my splendor. So the essence is, now your consciousness has become integrated, knowing that there's nothing independent from me. Forget about this and completely. Jivanti sanmukardam bhavadiyavartam dedicate yourself to hearing the beautiful pastimes of Sri Krishna. And by hearing his beautiful pastimes, you can conquer him. That Lord who cannot be conquered, cannot be understood in any way by anyone, becomes conquered by you. That means that Krishna himself becomes the servant of his devotee, controlled by the love of his devotee. And so uh, Krishna, at the end of this chapter, having cut off all the possibilities of other directions for your bhakti to go, is directing that bhakti extremely and only exclusively towards his beautiful human-like sarup as uh, Sri Krishna. And bhakti should be done to him. And by only hearing about his pastimes, all jnana and vairagya, it will come automatically and praying will come. Because... The knowledge of opulence is not, will not lead to a bhakti which is powerful. Sri Krishna said, oh, in this universe many persons worship me knowing that I am God. But Sakali Jagati More Kori Vidhi Bhakti, Vidhi Bhakti Braja Bhav Paiti Nahi Shakti. This worship and devotion to me knowing that I am God is not powerful enough to awaken the loving feelings of the residents of Braja. Hmm? Because if you see that I am God, then your love for me becomes weakened. And that weakened love, though it can to a certain degree please me, but it cannot control me. And Krishna, he loves to be controlled by love. Hmm? So this is the uh, final instruction here. 
So don't be all the time talking about the universal form and the opulences of the universe and Krishna's six opulences, Aishwarya Sya, Samakara Sya, Virya Sya, One should hear the beautiful pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. This will lead to praying. One should be absorbed in praying to Krishna, not like a person in Vaidhi Bhakti, thinking, my name is mm, so-and-so Das, and I am from mm, America or Russia or Italy or Spain or Australia, uh, and uh, Krishna is far, far away, beyond the uh, material sky, beyond Vaikuntha, Ingra, Loka, Branda, who is like in this mood. One has to chant and hear and remember being absorbed in Sambandha Gyan, in one's relationship, following in the footsteps of our great Acharyas, like Srila Bhaktinot Thakur, who was weeping and singing, Palya dasi kori hi, lalita sundari, amare loya kabe, si adika pade, kale milaibe, agya seva samarpi. Oh, when will that day come? I will be in Vrindavan as a maidservant of Radhika under the guidance of Lalita Saki, she will bring me into the presence of Radhika and give me instructions how to serve. When will Vishaka Saki take me on one side and teach me beautiful songs which are full of rasa? When will I uh, meet with Rasa Manjari and Rati Manjari with great joy and on the banks of Radhakund and serve Radhika there? So we're hearing, chanting and remembering, deeply absorbed in the Sambandha Gyan, by this, one will uh, make progress towards Braja Prem. And if you are always the thinking of the very great opulences all the time, then you get such a sanskar that maybe you can go to Vaikuntha or uh, Goloko, Dwarka or Mathura, but not Braja Dham. So, Atava Bahunaitena, Kim Gyatena Tavajana. What is the use of all of this knowledge? Now you understand Vasudeva Samamit, I'm everything. Now, Give up this attempt for knowledge and just bow down to the speaker of Harikata, to the hearers of Harikata, to the place where Harikata is taking place and to the managers of the festivals of Harikata with your heart. And by this, the Sambandha, that will nourish your Sambandha Gyan and gradually, gradually, the heart will be full of ras. Mm. And when the heart becomes filled with rasa by the action of the book Bhagavat and the person Bhagavat, then Krishna himself becomes under the control of your love. So this is the essence of the Vibhuti Yoga. Uh, don't be stuck in Vibhuti Yoga. It's only a means to another end. Jai. So Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Srila Gurudev ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Bali Vrindavan Vihai Lala Ki Jai, Vare Sani Wali Ki Jai, Jai Jai Sri Radhe Shami Tai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo.